Hello, somebody wanted me to do a video about what I thought about astral travel and out-of-body experiences. Um, astral travel is not an out-of-body experience. Is not something that I'm particularly well-read on or experienced in. Um, but I have heard some interesting things about it. Um, I listened to a coast-to-coast -coast radio show a couple years ago where there was, it was from an ER doctor who was an ER doctor for like 20 years and his wife was as well. And he was saying that, and he brought a lot of people back from the dead and he said every single person he brought back from the dead was angry with him for bringing them back from the dead. Um, because they went to the other side and they were filled with so much love and they felt so much love from the other side that, um, and you know, impossibilities and everything, that they didn't want to come back. And, um, and but a lot of other people, he said, um, could describe, um, <laughs> what the doctors were saying to each other while they were under and supposedly dead. And so there's print plenty of proof. If you do the research, there's, there is, I, I mean, I haven't read the book, but from judging from the way he was talking, I think if you did the research, you would find out that there's plenty of proof um, that it's real, that people know it's what people are saying while they're dead. And if you know an ER doctor, you should definitely interview them. I should interview an ER doctor um, and see if they have any stories like that. There's another story of some guy who was like, Hit, got in a car accident and they thought he, he was like passed out or dying or something and, and some guy came and helped and, and you know helped ask somebody to help them and they were talking and he when he came back he described to, to them exactly what they said so um, as far as out of as far as my personal experiences with out of body experience uh, well I lump out of body experience and lucid dreaming kind of in the same category for myself um, over the years recently, I've been getting better at um, experiencing that dividing line between you're awake and when you're asleep. Most people, they don't, you know, without practice, they don't really know that point when they go to sleep. They're awake and the next thing that they know, they're asleep. And, but there is a, um, an actual point where sleep comes and it is a gradual thing and you can you can detect it all you have to do is practice that and pay attention to it um, and it's really easy to do like if you're really tired and you're really groggy that's the perfect time to do it just lie down and uh, for me what happens and I experienced this just like a couple weeks ago um, I uh, turn that light off I lied down I was really tired and I heard all these other people speaking voice is coming. You can hear all these people speaking and I think that you're in dream world and you're hearing really real people and spirits talking and I thought there were people out because I was in the middle of nowhere or on the side of the road and I thought there were people around me talking and they're like talking about me or something so I forced myself to wake up which takes a few seconds and then as soon as I woke up the voices went away and so that's an interesting thing to do that that's what I call lucid dreaming because then you start and I've already talked about this in my lucid dreaming video but you and then you start to listen to you can start having actual dreams. Like the dreams come, the voices come, and then the dreams come, and your characters, and you're all of a sudden you're off in some world and you're dreaming, but you're awake. And you can't, but for me, I mean, some people say you can control what happens in your dream. I can't control what happens in my dream. I'm just an observer, but I'm awake. And sometimes, you know, when I'm having that dream, physically I'm asleep, like I can't move. Like if I hear if somebody walked in the room, I'd be able to hear them and everything. And, um, because I'm awake, but physically I'm asleep. I can't just get up. If I have, if I had to get up and move really quickly, I'd have to concentrate, and it would take like 30 seconds or something. And it's actually a scary, frustrating, and scary experience when you're awake and you can't. When you're mentally you're awake, but physically you're asleep and you can't move. But um, but I think you can also. I think that's for me. I mean, I haven't read a book about it, but that would be a good way to practice out of body because you could kind of feel you do feel kind of like you're disconnected from the body and you're moving around and I was at a Vipassana meditation, it's these 10 day uh, Buddhist meditation where you just you know meditate from like 4 in the morning till 9 o'clock at night all day long just paying attention to the breath and the sensations on your body and after like a few days of doing that I went in my tent and I 
I was doing this thing, you know, where I was sleeping and I could feel myself sleep and I was like kind of lucid sleeping and I kind of felt my body float up into the air and like I didn't and I but I was kind of dreaming so I kind of had like an imaginary area that I was in it wasn't like I could see the actual area that I was in in the tent but I was kind of floating up I could feel myself floating up and like bump it a bump up I guess on top of something and I was kind of like floating side to side to side kind of bouncing off like the edges of the tent or something and um, so that's basically my experience, my personal experience with um, out-of-body experience um, or astral travel. You know, astral travel, I would just lump in for myself as just being dreaming, you know. You're, you, you are traveling astrally when you're dreaming. That's what, you know, Lisa Renee said, that's what Bashar says, that you, um, you know, like if you have a dream where you're with a bunch of aliens in a spaceship, it's because you are. In your astral body um, and I believe that um, so I guess if you want to like do the astral travel of what people think about is just you want to do the lucid dreaming astral traveling and the best way to practice that is to just be really groggy you know like if you're, <laughs> you're like a, you stay up really long time or you have like a grueling job or you're an athlete and you're really tired and you get to sleep you know, or you take a sleeping pill or something and you can feel yourself groggy, just, yeah, just lay there and pay attention to yourself and, because it's easy to do, it just takes concentration, you just lay there and feel yourself being groggy, feel yourself being groggy and don't lose your concentration and you're eventually gonna, you're eventually gonna experience yourself falling into sleep and then you can, you know, take that opportunity to have yourself a little, nice little lucid dream. Um, but I mean, I guess some people are really good at like astral travel. I read like on David Wilcox's website, he had a description of astrally traveling where he like had a vision where he went way up into the like, you know, outer edges of the atmosphere of the world and he could feel all passing through all the like dimensional, um, levels and stuff. And so that's interesting. I mean, but, uh, but. That's all. <sighs> what shall I have to say about out-of-body experiences and astral travel?